<clears throat> okay, what the heck am I talking about today? <laughs> hey guys, remember when I said I'd only have two nights to image? Two nights only and then we'll just cloud over? Well, this week I actually have three clear nights. The weather turned and that's not actually the cool thing that happened. I actually got this little piece here and this is the ZWO. Wait, hold on. I actually forget what it's called. I, I always forget what this is called. It is the ZWO short adapter for the electronic filter wheel. What this is, it makes it possible for you to put a camera lens on your electronic filter wheel and use your AstroCam for imaging. I'm really excited about this because I've been wanting to do this for quite some time. I think I have a really good lens to try this out on, and that is the Rokinon 85mm f1.4. Now, I've had this lens for about almost 10 years now. I've done a lot of landscape photography with it. I've done a lot of infrared photography with it, and the vignetting on it is almost non-existent. Believe me, if you do infrared photography of any kind, you'll know when you have vignetting on a lens for sure. And I did actually use it for astrophotography a few times on a full frame sensor. And it wasn't anything big, it was just a picture of a random part of the Milky Way and it was actually when I first started astrophotography. What I did notice was the stars were nice and pinpoint. It had a really flat field up until out in the corners where it had just a little bit of coma. And that's when my powerhouse of a camera comes into play my ASI 183mm Pro. And don't let its small size fool you. It's got a one inch monochrome sensor, which has enabled me to take pictures up close and personal style of all these deep space nebulas and galaxies over the past couple years, which has taken my wide field refractors to a field of view usually reserved for larger, more expensive scopes but I'm able to enjoy those same views at a budget because of the sensor size. And with that small sensor, I'm only gonna be using the middle part of the lens where none of that coma is actually seen. I think it's a really good match for this lens and I'm looking forward to doing some super wide field astrophotography. What I mean when I say wide field astrophotography I mean, instead of fitting just one deep space object in my field of view, I can fit multiple DSOs in my field of view now. But keep in mind, I'm going to be stopping the lens down to f2.8. I usually shoot at f5.9, and that is 4.4 times faster than I'm used to shooting at, which means I'm gonna have shorter imaging times. Otherwise, I'm just gonna be overexposing my image. I'm figuring that my sub exposures are gonna be somewhere around one minute. The neat thing here is like in 2020, when I took the Rosette Nebula for the first time, I took five minute sub exposures. I was able to get 12 sub exposures per hour. Now with the Rokinon 85 millimeter shooting at f2.8, I'll be getting 60 sub exposures per hour, which is about five hours of integrated exposure time in one hour. This is because the data that I usually get in five minutes, I can get in one minute, speeding up my imaging time for the night. That being said, I think the target I'm gonna go for is going to be the Rosette Nebula, and then also above it, the Christmas tree cluster. I haven't taken a photo of the Rosette Nebula this year, so this is a perfect opportunity for me to do so. I already have the view of the rosette by itself, so it'll be nice to get the surrounding nebula around it. I'm really interested in getting that, and I'm interested in seeing how this lens performs. Since I'm familiar with the rosette and how it's shot and what worked for me, I think this is a great first target for this lens and AstroCam combination. I also am filming this video as I'm going along so I haven't gone out and shot anything or done anything. I, I, I don't know how this lens and camera combo is gonna work out. And I just, I kinda wanted to get and document my first impressions of it and take you guys along with me these next few nights. So I think this is gonna be an interesting video because I 
have no idea how it's going to end. And for better or worse, you know, I'll show you the results. So I guess the only thing left to do is wait for it to get dark and start imaging. I'm out here, I'm ready to go. The clouds just kind of parted right now. It parted at nine o'clock, it's 9.30 right now. And it's really cold. It actually snowed earlier today, but it's worth it. I'm out here, I'm focused. I got my Mount Polar lined and I'm really excited. I, I, I really wanna see what my first frame looks like. So I'm gonna dial in a 60 second exposure. See what that looks like. I'm all like super set up for tonight too. Like, Went to the grocery store, I got some snacks, I got some fruits, I got some vegetables, some... I'm, I'm ready to go for a long night of imaging. All right, let's do this. Here we go, 60 seconds. I'm totally guiding too right now. I, I don't need to guide with one minute exposures, but I am just in case. I need to maybe jump my exposure time up, but I think it's gonna turn out pretty good. All right, here we go, returning with the uh, first sub, 60 second sub. Wait, let me uh, screen capture this for you so I can show you. Here is the Rosette Nebula right here, and you see the Christmas tree cluster over here. That's 60 seconds. Let's see what three minutes look like. See, now I'm getting greedy. The Christmas tree cluster is super faint, so it's, so I just, I want to get enough exposure that I'm not blowing out the rosette. And it looks like from the histogram I'm doing okay. So we'll see how far it jumps. Yeah, I think we're going to be okay with three minute subs. I'm going to try and get an hour, but, well actually more than that. I'm going to get a, man I got all night, I can get a few hours on this, but. Now we're gonna see where we're gonna where we're gonna be at at three hours. I'm gonna do um, one hour in HA, uh, one hour in O3, and then one hour in S2, and just kind of see where we end up. Cool. Well, guys, I think I'm gonna pack it in for tonight. I actually got just a little bit over an hour in HA. And I had to pause my session a few times because the clouds kept coming in and out. So it took actually a while just to get that. Uh, despite that, the data looks really, really good. I had to take some flats though because my target was in the west and that's where Seattle was. So I need to make sure I can calibrate those gradients out. So I just took my flats and I think I'm gonna go home and pass out. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys uh, in the morning. I'm going to stack this data and we're going to see where we're at because I'm super curious to see what things look like at F2.8. And I guess we will try and get a night two and try and get a night three since the weather has been totally unstable. Who knows? Maybe it'll get clear on Wednesday, but for sure it's going to be clear on Thursday. But Tonight is uh, was a good night. <laughs> All right, good night.